Thank you guys for joining us on another episode of Always Making. I'm Derek. I'm Christy. And we are Steadfast <laughs> Rebels. I haven't done that in a while, so I, I kind of like, threw I don't know where he's going with this. But anyways, thanks again, guys. This is episode 21 of the podcast. Whoop, whoop. It is me and Christy here uh, catching up in the studio. Thanks again for joining us. Do uh, what you should do. Uh, subscribe, comment, uh, like, share the video. Do all those things. Follow yeah, us on yeah. social media <laughs> at Steadfast Rebels on the TikToks, on the Instagrams, <laughs> on the Facebooks and all that. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah. old man. Uh, yep, there you go. Okay, all right, guys. Um, <laughs> all that set aside. But uh, we want to thank you guys so much for uh, being part of this journey with us. This is episode 21. Like I said, we've got 20 episodes I in the know, can. Oh, I know. I can't believe it. Seriously, thank you guys so much for watching, listening, commenting, liking. I mean, it's just been like so awesome just to see some of the support and some of the comments. Um, you guys are awesome. We, uh, yeah, we've been having fun. I can't, I can't believe it's been 20 episodes. Like yeah. it does not feel like it's been that many. We're, we're almost coming up on a full year of doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, again, it's not our first rodeo of this. <laughs> it, this is just the longest one we've kind of got going for us, uh, with all the other projects we've had. So it's been fun. Um, we do appreciate it. The guests we've had on the shows have been awesome and, um, I can't thank them enough for like just uh, yeah. <laughs> trusting us that uh, we're not here for a gotcha on a maker <laughs> podcast. We just want to learn and share each other's passion about making. Yeah, seriously. Shout out to every guest that we've had. It's been so much fun. Everyone has been so amazing. Um, I, <laughs> I I still can't believe like people are willing to come to our basement and <laughs> record a podcast with us yeah. but and and what's been awesome about it is every single one of the guests that have come through they have been awesome friends afterwards mm -hmm. um huge shout out to um charmed mountain after we had juniper she oh. brought us dinner one night so uh, so sweet and a present for juniper like the cutest little pajamas yeah. and it was just so sweet super great um and then like as we continue on i mean we we are doing this because we want to hear everyone's story that we meet and kind of expand on just the conversations we're having at shows and like we meet these cool people and if you guys are just joining us and this is the first episode you guys are <laughs> tuning into, like the whole premise of the show is just to talk to other passionate artists and makers and creators and everybody who's come in, like no one expects what they like get when they come in into our studio <laughs> space. It they is don't think anybody knows what to expect. <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, but it's really great to see everybody come in and then they're, they're bringing their art to share with mm -hmm. us. That's really awesome. We have some really cool new pieces on the wall from people. We have yes. um, great soap from SLC Soap. I know. Um, everyone's been so generous, like, bringing us stuff. Like, we're not doing a podcast to get free stuff, I swear. No. <laughs> this doesn't make us money, guys. No. I'll tell you that right now. Um, no. But with all of that, like said again we we want to say thank you for being part of this with us and seeing us grow and hopefully we'll continue on for the next i don't know how many years we want to do this but uh just continue meeting Keep people going as long as we go <laughs> we're continuing to do shows we've got shows mm -hmm. coming up for this whole 2024 season yes um we've got some acceptance letters already for the different shows we'll get into that a little later in mm -hmm. the um episode but I do want to ask you, has mm -hmm. there been a guest story or a guest that has stood out from uh, the show so far? And if you guys oh. haven't seen any of our pre previous episodes, go check out some of the great guests. There's a ton of uh, different uh, makers, different uh, artists that are on the show already and many, many more to come. But um, do you have a guest that kind of stands out at, or like a story or something? that oh, kind of goodness. Um I want to say I was really struck by Paisley from Creating Paisley's um, just hearing about um, like her process and like how she got started, how young she is. Um, I thought she was really um, just really interesting to listen to. Um, everyone's been so great. Like I love Shalise from Butters Buttons. I mean, there's just been so many great conversations. Um, I, we learned so much about soap that we didn't know from, uh, both, Dewan, both Dewan and, and Charm Mountain. Yes. Yeah. Sarah from Charm Mountain. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know there's been so many, it's hard to choose. Like, yeah. Is there something that sticks out to you? Um, I, I'm I'm gonna be a little biased here because I mean we just recently did a collaboration with Trash Pile, uh, <laughs> yeah, Taylor from Trash Pile. <laughs> but she was one of our uh, first uh, few guests we mm -hmm. had on. So again, 
to trust us to come to our basement and be yeah. episode <laughs> four of our podcast uh-huh. and have a conversation and be vulnerable in the same sense as mm-hmm. if she's at a show. But um, I think the the storyline that crosses a lot of the makers we've had on so far is the way the pandemic uh, affected yeah. how they found their their voice yeah um i mean us too <laughs> yeah, for, yeah exactly like we we would not be where we are today if it wasn't for us getting out of that comfort of everyday life and going hey we need to change some things up here mm-hmm. and pursue something that's going to allow us to be happy in a very like unsure uh, time yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so um that, i think I, for a lot of people it was that sort of like it was that state of everything is unsure, so why not try something new, right? Like if there's a time to do it, it's now when nothing feels secure, right? When your normal nine to five doesn't feel secure, then why not try branching out? So I think I think that was, you know, it, it made it easier. Yeah, and the the certainly for us, and I think for others as well. Yeah, the through line with all of the guests as well too is just do it now yeah. don't wait for another pandemic don't wait for <laughs> yeah. another uh, like there uh, event another like one. that yeah <laughs> not anytime soon at least but <laughs> like the the thing if you guys are out there listening and you guys are wanting to get into the maker space wanting to create wanting to explore it, it really is just do it mm-hmm. and like we just I, start just yeah. put yourself out there i can mm-hmm. look across the room right now and see all the different projects and things that we have gotten ourselves into that we have no clue what we're doing with it uh and so like our yeah. experience of the oh, we're going to be going on 20 years together of it like making and creating but like the production side and video things we both have a good handle on that mm-hmm. but all these other things like you're right now working on a commission you've never done before <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's involving it's it's this commission. Well, I don't know if we want to get into it yet. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, this commission has been interesting because it's um, simple and complicated at the same time. It involves a lot of techniques that I've pretty much all techniques that I've done before, but putting things together in a way that I never have before. So it's a Buck Rogers cosplay. Um, so it's from I think the 70s, 60s, 70s. Um, very retro. Uh, the original costumes are made out of fabric that like is not around so much anymore. It's like this heavy duty spandex that like that kind of spandex has been replaced by lighter, thinner, like more cost effective stuff to make, right? Like fabric technology has come a long way. Um, So like just finding fabric that like would kind of fit the bill and look the part for the costume was like one challenge. And then um, it's knit, you know, material and it's very form fitting. Um, So I had a list of like, I think 20 measurements I asked for the customer. Like, because he doesn't live local. (laughs) No, no, he's not local. So I couldn't like get measurements, you know, myself from him. So I like sent him a a graphic of, you know, a little, um, you know, mannequin model, whatever, with like labels and numbers and like, okay, these are all the measurements I need from you. Please be as specific as possible. (laughs) Um, So it's challenging. Even then you had, uh, it was an ankle measurement. I know. Yeah, there was one measurement where he, he sent it in and I was like, that can't be right. Like, there's no way. And so I was like, you measured my ankle like three yeah. times to and like, i was just like there's verify. no way this guy's ankle is like i think he had like six inches and i was like that's like smaller than my wrist like that's impossible <laughs> and so i like kind of said a real nice email i was like okay i just want to double check a couple of the measurements and just make sure you know we're on the same page and you're measuring the right you know parts whatever and so he like sent me back and he's like yeah yeah i did all did all that, did that all. and i was like oh shoot do i send him another email and be like no no this measurement can't be right but then literally within like 10 minutes he said another one was like oh yeah just kidding i messed up the, the ankle measurement it's 10 inches not six inches <laughs> and i was yeah. like phew <laughs> but one of the things i thought was really cool and like this goes into us being more comfortable with talking with random makers random artists is the original buck rogers costume maker you got on a phone call so yeah so she's not the one who worked on the original buck rogers like series but she um is a costume designer and costume maker from from that era (laughs) and um she worked on like some star trek pieces she's worked on a i mean just a ton of stuff and so the customer that i'm working with had gotten on some like forum or reddit maybe i'm not sure and found people talking about this costume and someone on there had like her number had like tracked her down got hold of her so he gave me her number and i got to have a conversation with her and it was so great to like kind of talk shop um and talk about costume designing and doing custom commissions and so that was really really awesome because she had told me this awesome story about how she had done a replica of um 
some Han Solo pieces and they ended up in a um, not a museum, but like in like a showcase of like Star Wars, like original costume pieces. And she's like, well, it must have been good enough. If they thought mine was the original and it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really it was really fun to talk to her. That was really cool. It's really cool because if if you guys haven't experienced it yet in your maker community or haven't gotten out to a maker community kind of situation where you've, you're involved in it. Everybody wants to share their stuff. Like mm -hmm. uh, if you've guys seen our social media, we screen print a t-shirt with every guest that comes into the studio with us because we want to share what we're making. Now, some mm -hmm. of the stuff Christy does and sewing and stuff is not <laughs> something we can share with a, a couple minutes where a t-shirt is a lot easier to screen print. And uh, it's always fun to see people's like faces light up, especially people who don't have the like understanding or experience of a screen print uh, mm -hmm, kind of thing mm -hmm. it's completely out of their element and they are like oh you're actually sharing this with me and like like i can do this myself and like yeah have fun like screw it up it's fine it's not a big deal but i think that's one thing that was really cool i was upstairs and i can hear your conversation with her on the phone is uh i wasn't eavesdropping or anything it just <laughs> okay. we could hear it and uh but you could hear her like happy to share her knowledge and she's retired she, she but she was more and i think you were on the phone with her for over an hour um i don't know if it was quite that long i it felt like that maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe it felt that long no I, th I honestly think it was more like 40 minutes maybe but still <laughs> but still yeah no it was really really nice of her to like you know share with me and yeah so you know share stories and um like i said talk about like talk shop and talk about you know sewing and doing custom commissions and she was you know one of her stories was like oh i had this you know client who tried to take his measurements with like a you know a hardware style like measuring tape and she's like that doesn't work <laughs> like those don't bend around your body <laughs> yeah taylor's tapes and uh measuring tape uh from home depot is not the same completely thing. different <laughs> um i know the answer to this but i mean for the people who are out there listening mm -hmm. have you had any other uh, commissions where you've had somebody um, share their knowledge on making the costume? Um, not from someone who with as much experience mm -hmm. um, for sure. Um, I, yeah, I can't think of anyone. I, I, I will say I like to um, do custom commissions because people who are looking for custom, you know, costumes or cosplays are really passionate about about the cosplay or the costume that they want to recreate. So I do like talking to, you know, anybody and everybody about the costume, the character, like what they're into. I've done like LARP commissions. And so it's fun to like, you know, hear them talk about like, oh, I got, you know, I'm getting my armor from this place. And, you know, like to get into their own niche, even if it's not something that I know much about, like I don't really know anything about LARPing and armor. Like it's really cool to hear. We've watched some videos. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like it's something I know very little about. So yeah. even if it's not something that's like specific about, you know, costume designing or sewing, um, even just hearing what other people are really into, um, so much so that they want to commission, you know, a custom costume or cosplay. Yeah. I That's... mean, in the grand scheme of it, a commission piece is not a cheap piece. Um, mm -hmm. it, it takes a lot of more time and effort and you're creating it from scratch, not having templates, not having. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can... No, I, I try and do all my patterns designs myself. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you're, we're not like no, no, like bad blood against any of the costume stores out there that are mass produced for the people <laughs> that, but like those aren't the same thing as people who are passionate about cosplay. Mm -hmm. And I mean, some like some of these pieces that we get into with, um, uh, uh, like going to events and everything, people are spending thousands of dollars oh, on that. Yeah. And it's Easily. awesome. <laughs> and and I, I, I commend them because of their, like their passion. They, mm -hmm. they re it really comes through. And I think it's one of those cool things to see them whether they make it or they commission people to make it for them they really really take a lot of time and effort mm -hmm. to put that whole thing forward and i it's really cool to see everybody who you send out your pieces to and then set they send back photos of them at an event mm -hmm. wearing it and they're yeah. they look super like stoked to be in it they feel very confident walking around in their piece yeah i um, love seeing photos from cons like yeah, yeah the comic convention photos are my favorite yeah it's always one of those things too <laughs> where we like when we're wearing stuff you're you in your things after we're always scrolling to see if anyone's like just taking random photos yeah. <laughs> of like the costumes to see if it pops up. Well, that's so that's really fun is one time one of my like friends that I know, you know, personally, like 
I was scrolling Instagram or, you know, somewhere and saw a picture of me in a costume at a con that she like, it was some random person's page. And she was like, oh my gosh, I just saw you on the internet. Like <laughs> you're internet famous. <laughs> um, On that note, I, I do want to like break into like, you've had people talk, you've had the last costume cosplay you're working on, mm -hmm. had uh, someone to kind of, coach you and share some of her knowledge about it but a lot of the other stuff we get from tutorial videos online we mm -hmm. watch a lot of stuff um there's some great channels punish props adam savage tested i was just um, gonna say tested. evan and caitlin <laughs> um I, i'm trying i'm blanking on a bunch of the other people oh, uh, so uh nerd forge um yeah Did you uh, say evil ted evil ted there's another one um, um if you guys are in so many. the <gasps> costume world or looking to get into that check out all these uh awesome creators like They've started way before us with mm -hmm. all of the stuff, and we've been inspired by a lot of the stuff they do. Um, I, there's so many I'm I'm forgetting right now. But mm -hmm. what I what that transition is is like because they're sharing, it's inspired us to share our tutorials and our maker stuff, and we are continuing mm -hmm. to put some stuff out. And I want to get into some of those videos that we've done so far. We're sharing uh, the knowledge and stuff of like what we're making here and selling mm -hmm. at our shop, mm -hmm. but we will be getting into a lot of other variety of things that we're making and maybe not even making for the sense of selling or um, uh, uh, trying to make a profit off it just to make stuff. But um, again, thank you guys for like <laughs> watching those videos. Like, the, like because we've been doing the podcast it, it we wanted to do both of them for a long time mm -hmm. and we finally have gotten like the the flow of things with all of the stuff going on to start putting out some tutorial videos and I, i'm 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 blown away by the response on the sticker video like it yes just, it's, been, it's awesome. been so amazing to see our like you know we get really excited every day we kind of like check our subscriber count on youtube and we see if there's new comments that have come in it's been so fun to like respond to people's comments and get into conversations with people um you know in the comments on our youtube videos um and yeah just see our like subscriber count go up and see like such positivity coming back um, yeah. on our tutorial videos for sure and so we do have some cool things planned ahead we've been working on a screen printing one because that's one of the things we do a lot of but i want to make sure it's right um but it's an alternative way to screen print so we we've got a way that it, it might be easier for a lot of people to get their hands little dirty with the ink and <laughs> uh play around with screen printing but that's probably going to be our next one that's coming out soon but mm -hmm. um Right now, it's the sticker video, our button video, um, our paper making video, which um, I have some plans. We just got a dog pool, uh, <laughs> a, a little dog pool. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. like it's about like eight inches tall and it's like 40 inches wide by like 36 inches wide or something. Over long, so that I can do bigger paper like yes. that. I've got some big <laughs> frames that I'm going to make some really big poster size uh, recycled paper. So that's really cool. But if you guys want to see how we make it, um, it's the same process. It's just scaled down for a smaller size. Um, you can watch that tutorial video. Mm -hmm. Um, I also just blew out one of our blenders and I don't know why <laughs> blenders are so hard to find at the thrift store. Like everybody, like uh, it's, it, it must be a hot ticket item at thrift stores. I'm yeah. not sure. So, um, if you saw our social media, <laughs> I found, I think what we look it up, it was like from the 70s. Oh, easily. Yeah. Avocado <laughs> green. Avocado green blender, <laughs> um, glass jar. So um, I haven't blended any paper in it. It did turn on and it didn't smell like it was burning. So <laughs> I think it's okay. Um, but I plan on making some pulp. Um, I think I have two five gallon buckets like filled with pulp right now to make some screens. I've just been trying to get some free time to that. Mm -hmm. And then our uh, last video, what was it? We that? also uh, have some leather earrings. Leather earring leather videos. Earrings. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. I was uh, forget about that. Uh, some of the leather uh, stuff. And we've got some other leather uh, tutorials planned as well mm -hmm. in the and future with that. Some sewing ones. We had a request to do uh, some foam. Some foam um, crafts. Yep, foam crafts. Um, and so we've played around with foam. We've played. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of... Um, like styrofoam work with making like D and D scenery mm -hmm. and um, uh, like prop stuff and things like that. So we'll get into a yeah. lot of different things. And then I'm also like I've done some EVA foam uh, work with some cosplays as well. Yeah. So. And so um, we've done uh, a puppet where we've played around with foam <laughs> to make the puppet like uh -huh. a kind of like a um, upholstery foam. <laughs> yeah. Upholstery foam. So we've got some so foams, foams. <laughs> uh, to play around with and share with you guys as well. But 
Um, I do want to ask you guys uh, who are watching, is there tutorials that you feel are missing that you want to see uh, out there? Are you trying to get into a certain hobby and would yeah, want something some you want to know yeah, more about or something that you've seen us make in particular that we sell that you want us to um, you know, share how we make. Yeah. We want to be transparent with everything we're making and share as much as we can. And again, I, that's, I think one of the cool things with all the guests we've had on the show, <laughs> like, cause we are exchanging knowledge and sharing when they come back to the uh, studio to hang out with us or like to make something with us. It's, it's, it feels, they almost feel like they're coming back to share their like bits with us. And that's kind <laughs> of cool. Um, our last one uh, with Dawn from SLC soap, like I, I, don't want to get into soap, but I kind of want to get into soap <laughs> because it, like her techniques were very cool. <laughs> we have such a hard time. Like we're both so like interested in learning how to do everything. And so when we have these awesome guests come on and like talk about how they make things, we're both like, Ooh, okay. That's interesting. We could do that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I think we have most of we those have a problem. tools already. Yeah. Um, like I want to start, you know, doing some like cool little like found foliage art like oh after these. butter buttons yeah because well, <laughs> you do so much hiking and so it's yeah. one of those things where like you can like get a foraging bag first first we need to sew a foraging bag oh and, easy um, like I, i've actually <laughs> thought of some uh, designs and patterns that, that i've shared with you already uh -huh. so a foraging bag first then we are going to be able to get the stuff forged <laughs> to then come back and make and uh we'll probably have uh butter buttons come down yeah. and uh Share. show us yeah. how she did does it because i mean we're gonna be completely lost on that end um <laughs> but uh one of the other things i I've, uh we've been watching right now um 10 hundred if you guys aren't familiar Ooh, with mm -hmm. the artist one of the coolest things he's doing right now is a collaboration with a lot of artists across the world i mean well europe and uh us but i think that's really cool that he's building his community much bigger numbers <laughs> and stuff and has a lot bigger <laughs> reach uh out there but um it is one of those cool things and I, I, I get inspired that I'm like, if all these artists want to work together and they're not like, oh, you do graffiti art or you do street art. I don't want to do street art with you because, but they're all working together, making really cool art. Like eventually, like hopefully with a lot of the people we've had on before, we can start doing the same thing. And the co collaboration with Trash Pile, like is that first, I think, step for us to kind of, yeah. I don't know how we collaborate and make our stuff into soap or, or <laughs> our stuff into uh, foliage fa uh, found stuff. But um, I mean, there might be a way. So yeah. that's uh, stuff we look forward to with all of that there. But I do want to get into this whole six, past six months. If you guys haven't <laughs> noticed or haven't seen the interruptions on the podcast. Um, we have, we had an addition to the family. We had an addition to the <laughs> maker space. Um, and I, 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 again, uh, I'm experiencing this. I know it from like being here, but how are you juggling your creative outlets um, with having a newborn? Because for some of the guests we've had on, they've had kids, they've kind mm -hmm. of po postponed, they've kind of mm -hmm. slowed down, but um, has it been easy to continue <laughs> doing your stuff? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean... I, it's the, the biggest struggle for me is trying to balance taking care of her, working, housework, taking care of myself. You know, there's a lot of different things to juggle and I definitely struggle with that. Um, but, you know, you, you figure it out. Like we've been managing and she's awesome. Like she's such a great baby. So it's been, um, you know, not too difficult to like strap her into you know the carrier and come down here and do a little bit of work and then um you know take breaks go back upstairs read some books play whatever then come back down put her in her little seat on the table and then you know cut out some hat like today she was in her little seat while i was cutting out some um pieces for the costume i'm working on um and then you know she gets tired okay let's go back upstairs and <laughs> do something with juniper um so you know it's just trying to like figure out balance, find ways to get done what I need to get done, but also make sure I'm spending quality time with her and doing things that, you know, she needs. And, um, you know, she started napping a little bit better. So that helps too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well the first go and then, and, and I mean, we talked about this already, but like we opened the shop back up two weeks after having her mm -hmm. kind of thing. And it was, it was like, Hey, I think we can do this. And this was you saying it, not me. Yeah. This was, well, and I had, I had known I wanted to like not have the shop closed for too long. So I had made some inventory 
you know, as much as I kind of could while I was pregnant beforehand. So I knew I had inventory at least, okay, we can at least like have these things listed in the shop and ready to go so that if we get sales, all we have to do is package it up and put it in the mail. Easy. Yeah. Um, we also uh, tried to set up a lot of print on demand stuff as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. um, taking some of my original art and uh, using third party services to allow that stuff to be purchased and um, not having us go through that process. There's still so many things that we hand make ourselves. So it like, it didn't really, we didn't see a change in much with, <laughs> yeah. with doing that. But um, because a lot of the stuff we do at uh, local shows and local markets are all things we make, mm -hmm. the on demand and print stuff that we do um, online is more for people who are not as local and mm -hmm. convenient to like get some of those things. But as we continue to like build our inventory and get a better process, the print on demand stuff will kind of dwindle down again and uh the stuff that we're producing here and we'll uh fill the shop uh back up and that we can get the time to do all that proper stuff that way i will say um i i'm i'm either a night owl or a morning uh riser. yeah i was gonna say like, how's it been for you <laughs> yeah it's uh but like i think the thing that i've i've uh had success with is when she does wake me up at four o'clock in the morning <laughs> and then she goes back to sleep I'm down here in the office, like editing these podcasts or uh, creating our social or uh, working on graphics. And then um, the iPad is also something that is super convenient to have um, on the sofa while she's right there lying down next to us or, or playing with her stuff. I can draw and create stuff. And um, the tough part is going from the iPad down to the, my computer in the basement uh, to finish my and finalize my designs and use Illustrator and mm -hmm. all the Adobe stuff to really make everything like complete. Um, so it, it is like that finding that balance mm -hmm. for you. I know you need a lot more sleep than I do. Yeah. Yeah. No, if I'm up at four in the morning, like I need to try and get back to sleep after feeding her. So. Yeah. My <laughs> brain more starts that. like working already <laughs> through that process and like, what can I get done? Um, and I mean, there's been some really good pieces that I'm really happy to share, um, this market season as we get into it. Um, there's some cool new things that I've worked on, some, uh, prints that I'm excited to go about. Um, this large paper thing, I've been tr like trying to get large paper made. So some of my screen printed work can get onto these larger pieces of paper and make more poster size things, which I think will be very cool and should be ready by June. <laughs> maybe, maybe hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> uh, by our june shows um i definitely know craft lake city i will have them for sure mm -hmm, that's um, in august but i do want to like bring them out to some shows before and kind of get a feel for people and what they think about them and uh get reactions but yeah um, i will say i think that um one thing that helps a lot is that we're both um like we're, we're both home and we're both makers and uh, having you home for at least the first, you know, several months was really helpful. So it was like, OK, I got an order that came in. I need to go do some work. You know, like you've got the baby or vice versa. Like, oh, I've got, you know, the podcast edit. OK, I've got the baby. You go downstairs and edit. Yeah. Um. So I think, you know, we do our best to be a, a good team. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we've been doing it for long enough. I think I mean, we'll tolerate each other a little longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But with all that said, like we're still pushing forward. Like these mm -hmm. episodes are still coming out. Tutorial videos. We added another thing on top of it. We have a couple other things we do want to work on as well. Um, we do have some ideas for some live stream stuff where we'll be here in the studio making something with you guys, sharing some stuff mm -hmm. with you guys. So that's something to look forward to in the future. Um, we we do also really want to get into other people's maker spaces. You yep. know, we have people come here to do the podcast with us, but we really want to go. Um, you know, check out other people's neighbors, maker spaces and do some little like, you know, shop tours or whatever it may be. I, I will throw an Easter egg out there for you guys. Um, <laughs> some of the production stuff I was working on before, it's called Pet World Insider. And we did a show, I forget, from the Pet World with producer Derek, I think is what it I, I forget the title exactly, but, like that. but if you look up Pet World Insider, you'll find like the <laughs> idea of what we want to do where I, I went to a lot of... Uh, pet places um mm -hmm. uh, reptile specialists and different uh uh sanctuaries say, and things dan uh, dan <laughs> dan's exotics uh mm -hmm. but uh we want to take that same approach where we we get into these people that are passionate about what they're making and see their space because mm -hmm. here's the reality what what we have here what you see on camera what you've seen on our tutorial videos 
that didn't happen overnight. That's 19 plus years uh, of buying tools, yeah, collecting. getting supplies, <laughs> um, like some projects take us months to like find the things we want to f- finish those projects. Which so, we have not done a shop tour of our whole space. No, so and it's that coming. It is, come. it is coming. <laughs> um, I continue to try cleaning something and then it's like, oh, let's maybe before we do that, we'll show it this way. Uh, um, but uh, that is something uh, we we want to do as well is share our workspace and how we like organize our stuff, how we've done. Because here's the fun part. It didn't cost us a lot. It took time to get to where we're at, mm-hmm. but like the table like that we're on is uh, from the thrift store. The uh, shelves mm-hmm. that we have are not like crazy crafter shelves or anything. <laughs> no. I think we got them at Target on sale. Kind I was going to say Target or um, Walmart and yeah. they were cheap and they fit. <laughs> and they work and we, we've we modified things mm-hmm. to work for us. And so yep. that's the thing we want to share. And again, like we're passionate about making and we, we're not trying to like – keep it to ourselves we want to share that with all of you guys out there um i forget where i was going with that Sorry. before uh <laughs> you s- said something but um uh i want to get into be- because we have the experience that we have getting into the market world that we did we we you still struggle a little bit with it on commission side i have a background in a little bit in marketing and uh, wholesale production and manufacturing so like pricing things is a conversation we've had uh, multiple times on the podcast mm-hmm. with different guests um and for some guests it's it's i price it to make my money back on my supplies right <laughs> and and, if, and for us because some of the stuff we do we know mass uh uh producing is not the solution uh for what we're dealing with but producing in a way that is uh cost effective oh we might have an interruption here speaking of juniper (laughs) yeah speaking of juniper uh (laughs) slight interruption there guys Uh, i'll get back to this conversation here real quick we were talking about uh worth Uh and value of and time spent how how have you gotten better uh about potentially pricing out your commissions or the work that we put out on the market and making sure that it's a return value to you yeah i i mean i don't know if i've gotten like better but i feel like i've gotten more comfortable um you know with choosing prices um as far as commissions go um i try and Estim- you know, it's always hard because it's going to be an estimate, right? Especially if it's something that I haven't made before. Um, so I try and estimate, you know, okay, how much material am I going to need? Um, and then how much is that going to cost? So, you know, then start with the material cost. And then, you know, how many hours roughly do I think it's going to take me? And how much do I want to charge for those hours? Um, but yeah, so I try and charge for material plus, you know, time. Um, and just kind of do a simple calculation from there. Um, and I also do try and work, you know, a lot of times I'll ask, you know, do you have a budget for this? Because because <laughs> with costumes um, and these custom commissions, it can go really crazy. Like I, you know, I could spend hours and hours and, you know, add all kinds of details and put all kinds of extra work into it. But if they're really looking like, oh, you know, my budget's more like 250 bucks or 500 bucks, then, okay, let me scale, <laughs> let me scale myself back yeah. um, and, and figure out, okay, well, you know, is it, can I do it within that, in your price range? Um, or what can I create for you in that price range? Because um, I do think, you know, I think there's, um, something to be said if we're working within someone's budget and I think, you know, okay, well, you only want to spend so much. Well, then, okay, I don't have to do like X and X and X, but here's what I can give you for that price. So, um, you know, it's still a balancing act. And I also do like, you know, I know like this commission that I'm working on right now is taking me a little bit of extra time, but more so because I'm kind of going back and forth and like spending like 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there working on it while Juniper is napping or while she's happy to like sit and play or entertain herself for a little bit while I'm working. Um, so I kind of won't factor in the sort of the extra time that it takes me in that sense because I'm, you know, balancing or juggling both. Um, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it still can be a bit of a struggle. And I still tend to, you know, uh, underestimate or overestimate, however you want to put it, um, you know, how long it's going to take me and how much I should charge. And, um, you know, I do my best. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I I don't know who I can give credit to for for where I got my my 
mindset to charge and and like go through the process with it. Mm-hmm. But it goes all the way back to college years where I was doing freelance mm-hmm. uh, videography for a lot of local bands. Uh, and the way I always would break that down is like hourly of what it would take me to uh, create what I was going to do because I shot a lot of concerts. Mm -hmm. Usually I was there for an hour for someone set at some of these concerts. So Mm -hmm. I knew I'd be filming. I knew there'd be an hour before that concert that I'd be getting my gear ready, everything an hour after that concert that I was like packing up my gear, getting everything. And then I knew the editing time on an average, like, three to five minute music video, I could pump it out in about two to three hours mm-hmm. uh, of edit. So when I kind of broke down the time, everything going down, I looked at it at about a rough eight to 10 hour job. Mm-hmm. And the way I really looked at it is like, if I was working minimum wage at the time, I wasn't, I, I was making a little bit more than minimum wage. Um, but like if I worked eight hours, would that cover what I did Mm -hmm. for it. Now, the thing that added to that is my cameras cost me three grand for my video camera, Mm -hmm. the microphones and other stuff. I ended up with walking into places at $6,000 of camera equipment. And with that equipment, I realized like, oh, I have to charge on top of that the same uh, as if a rental house would potentially Mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Cause it was my equipment. I w- I paid it off or I was paying it off at the time. I had a rough estimate of like, this is what it's cost me. And I could break that down. And it was a mindset of like, break this down, break this down, break this down. Here is what I'll come out to your place for no more of fi- uh, mo- no minimum of $500 kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I, but that was, that was where I would drop to. I would usually go 800, $900 for a gig And um, if that was what they could work with, it's like, great, cool. I made way more than I was asking. But if they're like, oh, man, we only have a budget, like you said, of like $600. Okay, I understand. Like I this time I can make it work kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Knowing I'm still going to make. There were plenty of shows I did for free. Mm -hmm. Um, I took some of my photography stuff and did some things. And it was an understanding that it was experience. Yeah. And they never got the rights to any of my stuff. It was my stuff that I got to use commercial work, whatever I was doing with it after. But I always gave the bands I worked with, like, here's some photos, here's some videos, but it would land on my page, not your page or vice versa. In those kind of situations, you had to know that ground. But when it came to the manufacturing of what we're doing and like making t-shirts and understanding like, Oh, if I can make 30 t-shirts in an hour, like, those t-shirts value to me is if like my time. So what is that hour worth to me? And here's the thing you guys are going to go to a show and think, Oh, I spent like two, three hours on making t-shirts or parents or whatever kind of thing in your art. And all you break that all down and you think, Oh, it's an easy $600 or like if I, but you have to sell out of everything (laughs) to make that. So you have to understand where that balance is with that as well. And it it comes with time. It comes with experience. But the the toughest thing, like thing I I always hear is when people undercharge their worth. And mm-hmm. I like I've struggled with you mm-hmm. because there's been plenty of times where you have I'm like no charge more. <laughs> like I've I've done freelance since I was like out of high school. It's been freelance, so I've always been in a mindset of like trying to get that money to cover the equipment, cover the gear, cover the um, tools that we use, but um, then profit on top of that because it's reinvesting in your, in your like hobby. But it was always like, Oh, like, I mean, I could, I could do it for $20. I'm like, you're worth more than $20. <laughs> get, get, get paid. Do your, do your awesome art and get paid for it. We don't need to be starving artists anymore. <laughs> like there's plenty of cool places to be out there uh, in these markets that you guys can put your stuff out And the other like weird mindset that does happen is if you charge Mm. too low, the people tend to be like, oh, it's not worth the value. Yeah, it it tends to like make it seem like the value of the item is lower. Yeah. And so then they're like, oh, man, like I think this sticker is really cool. Oh, you're only charging a quarter for 50 cents, a dollar for kind of thing. They go, 
oh, okay. And they kind of like. Like, oh, but, does that mean it's like a crappy sticker? Yeah. Like, yeah why are you but charging like, so little for it? If I'm charging like 3 to $5 for a sticker and like some play, some people charge $10 for an art sticker. And I, I totally understand why you would do that. And people go, oh, man, this is kind of cool. This is like, oh, I'm, I'm paying $10. It makes the person feel like that value of what they're paying. And it, it, it might still be a 10 cents printed sticker. <laughs> but like because of the psychology of it, it's like, oh, man, this is a more valuable piece of sticker. Then what happens once you buy a $10 sticker, you don't want to put it on anything because it's a $10 yeah. sticker. So you're like, oh, what water bottles worth my $10 <laughs> sticker? Um, but that is the thing. I, 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 I don't know how we'll express that to you guys over this period of sharing and, and knowledge and stuff like that. But your worth is more than what you guys think. And sometimes it, it's a, it's a friendly push from uh, your yeah. <laughs> maker podcast. You listen to selling charge more for yeah. your stuff. And I do think it's okay to like, okay, you're just getting started. Maybe you start like with a little bit lower prices, but once you start building that experience, charge for that experience, you yeah. know, people are paying you for your expertise or for your experience. So yeah. You know, if you're just getting started, okay, you know, it's okay to start a little lower on prices if you feel that that's, you know, what you want to do. But don't be afraid to start, you know, increasing your prices as your value we've also, also talk- increases. We've also <laughs> talked about this on the show with other vendors and some vendors like us have different scale of pricing. Mm-hmm. And so there are people who want to support you and have a dollar and that's so have something that they can support you with for a dollar. But there's also people who want to buy your art that will spend a hundred, 200, $300. Put that piece up on the back of your booth or on the top of your table at the mm-hmm. highest price. And it might not sell the first, the second, the third, the fourth show kind of thing. You might have it sitting there for a year. I think I've had a couple pieces that have been sitting there for maybe close. We're coming up on that year, but I I've sold versions of it that are a little on the cheaper side but i know it grabs attention also Mm -hmm. and there Mm -hmm. will be the person who will come in and go man that is worth a hundred dollar value to it so like again i know this is easier said than done when you're limited on supplies or materials or whatever but like if you have an original piece don't sell that piece for ten dollars right sell this (laughs) scanned print copy piece for ten dollars keep your original piece at a high thing because that is where the value is is in your original art Mm -hmm. in that sense and so put it in a frame put it and have it look like it not that it looks like it have it represent the value that it is actually worth in that sense and so um like i said i i don't i don't have the right answers i don't know all (laughs) the answers but if i can influence somebody in a sense to like feel more confident and saying oh yeah you know what my five dollar piece is worth twenty dollars and i will will, we all come to a similar scale Mm -hmm. and if you go to a lot of these shows a lot of conventions a lot of stuff what you will find is people are pricing almost identical across yeah that's something i was going to say was You know, so commissions are one thing, but when it comes to pricing, like things that we make, I do try and look around and see like, okay, well, what are other people charging? Um, Yeah, like what what are the materials are they using? Are they using a higher quality material? So maybe they're charging more or is it, you know, similar to ours or, you know, like try and try and kind of be in the same realm. Yeah. And don't (laughs) try to undercut other artists by dropping your price. Because what you're doing is devaluing your work Mm -hmm. there. Like if 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 excuse me, if you have a print that's $20 and the booth next to you has a print that's $20, the person buying the print is going to decide which one they want. Like Mm -hmm. we've had this discussion as well. Not everyone's going to like every piece of art that you do, that we do. And that's okay. But there is an audience for each artist out there. Yeah. And so if, if you see the majority of people are selling prints at $20, Keep your prints at twenty dollars. Don't think, oh, because they're selling them at twenty, I should sell mine at fifteen because I'm going to sell more. That's not going to be the case. Mm-hmm. You you will end up probably selling less because you've kind of devalued, and you're like, why is the yours fifteen, but this artist over here, like, I'm, I want I want to support the twenty dollar artist or the thirty dollar or the forty dollar artist because it's like I feel this is more value because I'm paying more for it. I am wholeheartedly one to go and be like, find a bargain. Go and like, there are times where I go, oh man, I might wait and see if I find something at a, like in my price that I can afford. But I also understand because I do all of this, what every other artist behind the table selling their stuff when I do buy it is going through a similar like anxiety or a similar like thought process mm-hmm. or like like fear of like, is my stuff gonna sell? Is it gonna be liked? And so. When I have the extra $40 for a print, 
hey, guess what? I'm going to give you the $40 for a print kind of thing. When I only have $20, well, I'm going to find the artist that, like, that I like that has a $20 print that I can support at that time. Or maybe some other item that's... Yeah, or it might not know. be prints. It yeah. might be sculptures. It might be like... Uh, or a postcard or something, yeah. you know, a, a smaller item that yeah. costs less because that's what we've got to spend. <laughs> yeah. And so like that's, that's the one thing that I, I wanted to... Because we've heard it a few times and like people when they get started are nervous about what they charge. And the, the, I think the best takeaway that you can do is when you get to these shows and check out what other vendors look and see what the kind of pr- price is at these things. Mm-hmm. And like you also, the more shows you do and the more vending you do, you will also come to realize that certain shows are going to have higher values. So you might mm-hmm. want to have a price tag that can switch for you as well, <laughs> yeah, because there are times where we've gone to shows and we can sell a $30 print. And then we know at certain shows that same print might be, Hey, you know what? I'm going to slash that $30 price down to $20. It's a sale. It's a deal. But in the same I have the room to like make that move and people are wanting to uh, will spend the same or I will sell the same amount of prints at a $20 show to a $30 show because it's the clientele and it's the same audience that's coming through and going, Oh yeah, I'm going to buy audience. this cool different audience, <laughs> but the same audience in the sense of that they like the stuff that they're <laughs> buying from us. I said words guys. <laughs> Um, we've got a dog in the Ooh. shot here. Uh, the other baby, is... the other baby <laughs> right now oh, is goodness. down here looking for attention. But um, I do want to end uh this episode uh, on a note of we will be out uh Craft Lake City. We got our acceptance letter. Yes, we do have to. Is... Did you already do the thing where we like approve that we want to do it? Like, do we? Do we, we're going to be at Craft Lake City. Yep, we'll yep, yep. Uh, take care of that. Um, we're going to be <laughs> in, at, August, <laughs> in August. In August. Mid August. We're going to be all through the month of July. We'll be up at the Brighton Resort for the BCC Flea. That's Big Cottonwood uh, Canyon Flea Market. And then we'll be at uh, during um, the last month of May. No, the uh, last weekend of May. Last weekend of May. Sorry. And the, the first weekend of June, we will be at the Mill uh, Creek, Mill Creek Co- Bazaar. So Mill Creek Commons. That's a new show for us. Uh-huh. So we'll see how that goes yep, for us. Yep. Um, looks uh, exciting. Um, it's got a roller rink attached to it so um, I think Christy might be taking some breaks and uh, skating I around I might be bringing my skates <laughs> <laughs> um, but make sure you follow us um, on Instagram we try and put up all our uh, show dates for sure um, so make sure you're following us at Steadfast Rebels so you can see where we're going to be and when we're going to be there um, that's what we have booked out so far I'm sure we will definitely be applying for more shows and uh, yeah I, we still we want to try to get into the avenues yes um, we got to do that application I forget the avenue street fair uh, that's later in the season. That's September. Um, we do want to try to get out to um, at least one of the uh, uh, Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest up mm-hmm. at Snowbird or Snow Basin. No, we were at Snow Basin last year. Snowbird. <laughs> uh, a lot of shows. One of them. <laughs> um, but we will definitely be trying to get out to a few more shows. So like Christy said, follow us on social media. Um, and uh, I mean, we'll be updating in the podcast as well. So if you guys aren't subscribed yet to the uh, podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel mm-hmm. and uh, listen to our updates. Yeah, and uh, if you have been listening to uh, or listening to or watching all of our episodes, comment down below which one has been your favorite or or what you want to see us do next. Yeah, and also if you guys have cool artist guests that are local to yes. the Salt Lake area, hey, send them our way. Yes. Like we want to talk to other cool artists and share. If you have friends that are doing art markets and mm-hmm. stuff like that, if you guys come out to an art market and like just say hi, like hey, we listen to your podcast and everything. I think so and so is a great guest. Let us know. Like yes, we want to hear do. kind of thing. But um, on that note, I think we are going to end this episode a little shorter here because uh, sub minus guest kind of thing. We just wanted to kind of catch up <laughs> with you guys. Uh, thank you guys for joining us on this episode. Thank you guys for being part of this adventure that we've been on so far. Yes. Like tuning in and doing all the stuff uh, with us and being part of this cool community we are building here yeah. um, for the Salt Lake area market scene and art scene and everything. <laughs> it really does mean a lot to us um, to see your likes and your comments and see you guys subscribe it is it's huge it's it's so awesome so thank you so much (laughs) yeah we'll see you guys on the next episode we got some cool guests lined up bye guys (laughs) 